Hi, and welcome back. Focal Point, AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The network is the American Family Radio Talk Network. Now, we need to talk about what has happened with regard to President Obama's inauguration. Now, you might have heard, I don't know if we talked about this yesterday on the program or not, but Louis Giglio, who is a conservative evangelical pastor, he pastors the Passion City Church in Atlanta, Georgia. He has done fantastic work in dealing with the issue of human trafficking and sex slavery. Slavery still exists, ladies and gentlemen, of the worst kind, young girls kidnapped and sold into sexual bondage, into sexual slavery. And Atlanta is the number one hub in the United States of America for human trafficking. And Louis Giglio, as a pastor, has a heart of compassion, as we all do, and wants to do something about it. So he has been working to deal with the problem of human trafficking. In fact, he's so committed to this. At a big, giant youth event, we've had, we've had the sons of people on our own staff here at AFA have gone to these Louis Giglio events where he focuses this younger generation, the millennials, turns their hearts and their faces toward God. Terrific stuff. And Louis Giglio found out that the Atlanta Police Department couldn't afford to have a department to pursue human trafficking. They were busy with other things. So Louis Giglio went to these young men and women at one of these uh, heart cry events over a New Year's Day weekend, and he raised $3 million, or 40, 50, 60,000 youth go to these events. He raised $3 million from those young men and women to provide the resources for the Atlanta Police Department to go after human traffickers in Atlanta. So he's done fantastic work. He's done great work. Well, his work on the human trafficking issue brought him to the attention of the Presidential Inauguration Committee. Now, Louis Giglio is one of us. He is an evangelical. He believes in the scriptures. He's a solid citizen, rock solid. They invited him to come and do the benediction. The widow of Medgar Evers, the civil rights leader that was murdered in Mississippi in the 1960s, she's going to do the invocation. That's the first prayer, the opening prayer, the one that Rick Warren did in 2008, and Louis Giglio was scheduled to do the benediction. That is the closing prayer to wrap things up. Well, Big Gay, the bully bigots at Big Gay, found out that somebody who actually believes what the Bible teaches about sexuality, who believes what the Founding Fathers believed about sexuality, who believes what Western civilization has believed about sexuality since the day of Christ, who believes what the American people believed without question for the first 350 years of our existence, they were horrified to discover that a man who actually believes in man-woman marriage, believes in the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of the family, and does not believe that homosexuality is a lifestyle that ought to be promoted or sanctioned, that he was invited to offer a prayer. The horror of this and so the bully bigots at Big Gay, they went to work on the inauguration committee, and they got Louis Giglio bounced right out of this deal. Now, you're going to hear people telling you, do not believe it. Do not let them lie to you. You're going to hear people say, hey, he pulled out on his own. It was his decision. That is absolutely a flat-out, total, bald-faced lie. Do not let them lie to you. Do not let them convince you that Louis Giglio did this on his own. Uh, what the statement from the Presidential Inaugural Committee said was this. Listen to this. First line. We were not aware of Pastor Giglio's past comments at the time of his selection. We had no idea that he was a raging bigot, a raging homophobic maniac. We didn't know that. When we invited him, all we knew is that he was opposed to human trafficking and the selling of young girls into sex slavery. That's all we knew. We had no idea he was a wacko, lunatic, right-wing nutcase. Now that we found out, uh, we have made it clear he has got no part in our program. We were not aware of Pastor Giglio's past. You, <laughs> I added some of that commentary. Here's the statement. We were not aware of Pastor Giglio's past comments at the time of his selection, and they don't reflect our desire to celebrate the strength and diversity of our country at this inaugural. So they bounced him out of there. They said, look, you don't, re you don't reflect our views. We're all about diversity. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, they are not. 
The last thing that secular fundamentalists and the homosexual activists are about is diversity. That is the absolute last thing they believe in. Zero. Bottom line, nada. No, sing, no, no place of any kind for diversity in their worldview. Because if they were about diversity, then they would be celebrating Louis Giglio being on the platform. Isn't this wonderful? Look how diverse the United States of America is. We have room. We are glad to make room on our platform for an evangelical Christian who believes the Scripture. Why? Because we believe in diversity. This is the best of the American cultural tradition, to make room for a wide range of views on controversial subjects. Isn't this tremendous? These are the colors of the rainbow. Pastor Louis Giglio, do the benediction. Knock yourself out, my friend. We're so happy to have you here. Why? Because we believe in diversity. You are part of the rich cultural fabric that makes America such a diverse and such a, such a rich uh, nation. So knock yourself out, Louis. Uh, pray to God on our behalf. That's what they would be saying if they really believed their own bilge. But it's swill. They don't believe one single thing about diversity uh, that they claim they believe. They believe in monoversity, not diversity, which means more than one. They believe in monoversity. You've got to believe what we believe. You've got to think what we think. You've got to say what we say, or we are going to send you to the Siberian Peninsula. And that's what's happened to Louis Giglio. He has been shunned, just like the Amish used to do, and maybe they still do. They shun somebody. They cut them off. They are dismissed from polite company. That is exactly what's happened to Louis Giglio. You know, they get on the church for being judgmental and exercising church. Look at how judgmental these people are. They've condemned this guy, banished him. He's got to wear a scarlet letter on his forehead now for the rest of his life. He's now been labeled by these paragons of tolerance as a homophobic bigot, and he'll wear that label for the rest of his life. This is how he's going to be known for the rest of his life. Oh, yeah. Louis Giglio, I don't know who that guy is. That's that homophobic bigot that uh, got bounced from the inaugural platform and wasn't allowed to pray at the inauguration of the president because he's a homophobic bigot. Yeah, I know who you're talking about, old Louis Giglio. And here's the last sentence from the statement from the inauguration or inaugural committee. As we now work to select someone to deliver the benediction, we will ensure their beliefs reflect this administration's vision of inclusion and acceptance for all Americans. So again, this makes it very clear. He got bounced. He got fired. He got exiled. He got banished. He got sent to his room. Do not let anybody lie to you that he did this on his own. This is the classic thing that happens. A guy, you know, your employer calls you in. you got two choices. You can resign or get fired. And most people choose to resign. Looks better on the resume and all that. So they gave him the chance to resign. But he was forced out. There is absolutely no question about this. Do not let anybody tell you anything different. And the reason he got bounced is, look, we're about diversity. You're not. I mean, this is a total bald-faced lie. They're not about diversity at all. They'd be excited he was on the program. And you, you don't represent our vision of inclusion and acceptance for all Americans. Let me ask you this question. Is Louis Giglio an American? Yeah, he's an American. Well, here is the inaugural committee saying, hey, what we're about, our vision is inclusion and acceptance for all Americans. Well, let me ask you this question. Where's the inclusion and acceptance for Louis Giglio? He's as American as anybody else. Let me ask you this question. Somebody needs to go find Louis Giglio and ask him, well, tell me, Pastor Louis Giglio, exactly how included and accepted do you feel right now? He's been tossed. He's been excluded. Instead of being accepted, he has been rejected in the interest of monoversity. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't let anybody tell you any different. This was a huge victory for the, homo for the heterophobic bigots the Christophobic bigots at Big Gay. So don't let anybody uh, tell you anything different now. And I'm going to play the sound bites. We'll, we'll, we'll carry this over into the next segment. Play the sound bites from the sermon that set everybody off from Louis Giglio. So stay tuned for that. And what you're going to hear from Louis Giglio is you're going to hear the same stuff that you hear every day on Focal Point. It's the same stuff that you hear in every evangelical pulpit, which is pastored by a guy that sincerely believes in the Word of God and will teach his people the whole counsel of God, not skipping over the parts that are awkward or uncomfortable. Remember, Paul said, I did not shrink from declaring to you what? The whole counsel of God. I didn't skip over anything because it was politically incorrect or because it was awkward or because it was uncomfortable. Now, Paul indicates, you know, I thought about it. 
I wanted to shrink back, but I didn't. I did not. Shrink. I made a. I made a purposeful decision as someone who was responsible to handle the eternal truth of the Word of God that I was going to tell you the truth even if it hurt. I was going to tell you the truth even if it was painful. I was going to tell you the truth even if it was awkward. I was going to tell you the truth even if it created difficulty uh, for me. And Paul was true to that calling. Now here is Louis Giglio, and here's his statement. He said, due to a message of mine that has surfaced from 15 to 20 years ago, uh, it is likely that my participation will be dwarfed by the furor surrounding my presence. So, you know, it's interesting to me. I'm, I'm not going to be hard on Louis Giglio. I love the guy. I have tremendous admiration, tremendous respect for him. But you even see Louis Giglio trying to create a little bit of distance between himself and a biblical view of sexuality. He's saying, look, that was a sermon from 15 to 20 years ago. That's ancient history. That's two decades ago I preached that sermon with the sort of the implication is that no longer reflects my current thinking. Clearly, he says, speaking on this issue has not been in the range of my priorities in the past 15 years. So the implication is that he hasn't talked about the issue of human sexuality in 15 years. I'm not talking about that anymore. That's not a focus for me. That's not a priority. Neither I nor our team feel it best serves the core message and goals we are seeking to accomplish to be in a fight on an issue not of our choosing. So Louis Giglio says, look, this issue of homosexual agenda, that's not my fight. I'm not fighting that battle. That's not a battle that I'm choosing. I don't want to be involved in that fight. That's not my fight. That's a fight for other people. Uh, that's not a priority for me right now. I'm not dealing with that. I don't want to be in that fight. I don't want to engage in the culture war over the issue of homosexuality. So taking a position, actually, that kind of reminds you of where some of the other leading evangelical groups in the country have come to, some of the Republican political leaders who want to be president in 2016 are creating distance between themselves and the homosexual lobby. And I, I think this is just out of intimidation. But anyway, so something Louis Giglio said 15, 20 years ago, and we'll play the sound bites for you so you can judge for yourself just how rabidly anti-LGBT he is. That was the knock on him. He is rabidly anti-LGBT. President Obama going to be sworn in on three different Bibles. Well, that's the Bible, according to the gay activists, that is rabidly anti-LGBT. What's he doing? Focal Point, AFR Talk. <laughs> 